Well, that's not exactly how we thought that one was going to go after a frenetic finish. Sixers fall in overtime, 122-119 to the Cavaliers. Amy Fiddle, Jim Lyon, and Mark Jackson. This is Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Curado Insurance. This was their group stage finale in the in-season tournament. We'll see how everything else sh uh, shakes out, but it'll be interesting because right now they would be a real, real long shot uh, somehow to even make it into the tournament. But you know, this one at the half, you were thinking the Sixers weren't playing that well. They came out a little bit still stagnant in the third, but Jim, they came on with full force in the fourth and really made this quite the entertaining game after the way it started. They really did, Aim, and you have to give Cleveland a lot of credit. Uh, they played extremely well at both ends of the floor in this game, but kudos to the Sixers. As you said, they dug in. Their best quarter, which is often the case defensively, was the fourth. Mm -hmm. And with that defense, they will tie the game. But I really think fatigue set in in that overtime period. And again, uh, Cleveland came up with a big time play. Sixers had a, a shot at the end, but not enough. Yeah, Mark, we're going to talk about some of those plays. But down the stretch, you saw some interesting kind of you know, defenses the Sixers were trying to do because they needed the Cavaliers to, to make those mistakes and turn the ball over so they could get the opportunities on their end. Absolutely. Sixers tried to maneuver in the second half to make adjustments to the defense because Garland was pretty much having his way. But, you know, Garland was just on fire today. And, and when he wasn't scoring, he's facilitating you know, making sure guys had shot. You know, we got the big big fella uh, Allen there doing what he does, mm -hmm. which is finishing. And the one-two punch that Allen and um, the big kid have. Mobley. Mobley, Mobley. with the alley-oops yeah. catch in the middle lane. It's just, it's a very difficult offense to stop mm -hmm. because of their bigs ability to finish as well also as distribute the ball. Yeah, and they ran the pick and roll to perfection there at times, certainly in the fourth quarter. Let's pick this one. It seemed like the Sixers weren't able to get over the hump. They had, were kind of stuck at that seven point mark for a while, but they cut it to three with under three middle against Joel Embiid. Look, all those white bodies, yep, white, white shirts right there. And the hockey pass. Yep. Boom. Great well, extra pass lead. there. Toby came up big with 23 today. So here you go. This is uh, Porter to Allen, and just, I mean, they, they worked that skill. perfection. That's perfection. Again, see the drive into the paint yeah. off the offensive rebound. See it? Good rebound. And, and Porter knows what he's doing. He could arrested his forward motion, a little bounce pass to the bigger. This was an exciting game. It was. It really was an exciting Terrific game. Terrific play here by Nick Nurse, and oh, my Lord. I can't believe that's Max going. Maxie missed the layup, and Joe, I think, had a tap at it. Yeah, and then. Um, <sighs> but watch what the Maxie goes to the backcourt, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to be involved. The pass came in directly to Joe, and they backdoored Maxie to the goal. Look at this. Truly he, remarkable. Oh, wow. That that didn't go uh, in. And obviously, and being careful not wanting to take it off 10, the cylinder, right? right. But uh, Embiid had actually fouled out um, right there. A little bit of a ticky-tack foul. Looked like more, it was more on Pat Bev, but Sixers, unfortunately, didn't have. We're short, but we fell short on that. They did have one last attempt, as you can see, um, that was put out of bounds by the Cavaliers, and they just aren't able to get the ball. And that is how this one ended. But it was, I mean, Honestly, the game started out a little bit bleak. Uh, this was an exciting finish. Sixers don't get the win. They finished two and two in Group A play. Um, the Pacers won their game. An unbelievable score. <laughs> you have to look it up. You're, you can't believe me. The total on that one is over 300 points. It was an absolute uh, frenetic uh, game on that one. But the Pacers won. They beat the Hawks like 155, 152. <laughs> it's just incredible to even say that's a basketball score. Yeah. Not in overtime, by the way. So the Sixers, uh, you would think, would somehow be eliminated. But it, it's one. I'm wondering if maybe because of this having the extra kind of in-season tournament, that that's where the intensity picked up in this one because it's not just a, a regular game in, in November, Mark. It's not, Amy. It's just not a, a run-of-the-mill a run of the mill type of game. This is the in-season game. This is a tournament, mm -hmm. rather. You know, this this has a lot of extra stakes on the hand, and that's why it got so tough to end. And I thought both teams tonight from a six point of view were really going all out. It's just that once that train of momentum start mm -hmm. going with Garland and Garrett and Allen. It was it caused us so much havoc. It was hard to continue late in the game, and they found it later. We made some adjustments, but then at the last fourth quarter, like six minutes left, we start, they started going back to it and started finding success with it. Yeah, the the Cavaliers certainly rebounded the ball quite well, as we showed you in a lot of those clips. Let's check in with Nick Nurse after his team's loss. Battle all night. Well, it certainly was an uphill battle. Um, 
at least I think comfortable probably never, but at least thought we were going to be in there with a chance, you know, a 50-50 chance of it, of it going either way, and which, which kind of that's the way it ended up. Um, so I think, I think at least we were, you know, we raised our level of play up, especially in the second half, and, and um, we gave ourselves a chance and just didn't, didn't work out. What do you think was the reason for the slow start today? Um, well, I just again didn't didn't think we were the the physicality of of um, the ball at both ends was you know really the big difference in the first half. When we drive around them, they would body us out the lane, and our, we were just a little jumpy. I thought we were jumping our feet, turning our feet, not not sliding early, right and. Obviously, we, we did a much better job in the second half of that, um, you know, at least getting some stops and playing a little harder and more physical, yeah. What type of impact do you think Pep played in order to allow you guys to kind of get back into it? Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, we were having a hard time keeping the ball in front. We were having a hard time with the pick and roll um, at times, and he, you know, he was able to shut shut the water off on a lot of that. And, and you know, I thought, I thought the group, you know, uh, House, Covington, Pat, um, you know, they were, they were, you know, they were getting the deflections and knocking the ball, equating a few turnovers, which we, which we needed because we were getting some good offense out of that at the other end. You had a lot of time in the end regulation and you got it, Joel, I saw it at the right elbow. Is that the play that you wanted? Yeah, I mean, I wanted him to have the ball and, and um, obviously take the shot if it was one-on-one -on -one, and if it wasn't, you know, we had some, we had some movement, we had some cutters, we, Told him to keep their eyes up in case the double team came, and, and he would make the right play. And it was a one-on-one -on -one play, and pretty good shot. Nick, Nick, now I guess uh, having to hop on a plane, go play Minnesota yep. tomorrow night. How do you kind of manage Joel and, and everybody else in the game? Yeah, I mean, we'll certainly have to look at look at that. Um, you know, once we get on the plane, obviously heavy, heavy, heavy minutes for for a lot of guys. Um, we're certainly going to need. Um, you know, some of the guys that didn't start the game, pretty low minutes, we're certainly going to need to, you know, get them some, some run and some extended run tomorrow and, and need, need them. This is the kind of game you need those guys to, to come out and, you know, instead of having their little four or five minute, six minute stints, they might, they might be into some nine, 10, 11 minute stints tomorrow. So we're going to need them. When you look back sort of in the April, May, June yep. season at nights like tonight, early in the season, close game, overtime experience, yep. low clock experience. Yep. What do you hope that the guys take from, from a night like this? Well, I think I think um, all that stuff's good. We're going to get plenty of that, right? We'll certainly, um, you know, be able to dissect the film and see, obviously, there's, there's situational things that we can do better. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of... The story of the night, really, that you know, we down one, we had an unbelievable play called to get a wide open layup, and it rolls off, and we had a tip in with two inches away that rolls off too, you know, and then you know they bank in a three at the shot clock. I mean, it was just kind of. I think the ball was just again. I always say that sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way, and it, it's going to go 50-50. And I think at least we got ourselves into position to that. My biggest thing though is 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 we got to understand like like that's a good team coming in and and um, just make sure we we don't try to ease into the game right i think i think we we were on a scale of 1 to 10 physicality wise we were a 2 and then we took it to you know 9 or 10 in the second half and and i think that it it did make us have to chase the game a little bit What's, what, what's your level of disappointment falling to two and two in in-season tournament play in Indiana winning the group? Uh, yeah, no, we're disappointed. I think, again, we, say, we stated, you know, right from the beginning of this thing, we thought it was a, a cool idea. Um, our guys were, our guys talked a lot about, um, you know, wanting to advance in the tournament. I guess we're, we're not going to, so we're going to have to try to find a positive out of there. There's got to be one. There's got to be a positive of of of, of <clears throat> not being able to play. We can focus on our regular season and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Cash, you had a lot of uh, long and uh, big players that played. Uh, Dean Wade, a pretty big player on Tyrese. You feel like mm -hmm. the the length and the size that they have in their defense made things tough for him. Um, I don't know about that. I think that uh, I thought he had some some 
pretty good chances. Um, I thought he had some, you know, good looks at three. I'm, I'm just trying to think. I don't, you know, I just don't think there was many of those threes that I would have wanted him to turn down or that he was forcing up there. You know, I can't even think of one, even like an end of quarter or, or something. Even a few of the step back lefts, we see him do that all the time. And, and um, but I don't, I don't, you know, I think he had some decent looks. It's just, you know, again, uh, we just, you know, we just didn't make could make one or two more of those, or or have a uh, average night for him, and and maybe it's a different result. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks everybody. You know, Coach Nurse talking about some of the 50-50 chances they had, and obviously how they closed this game, but also the disappointment that they, you know, were all in on this tournament. They were hoping that they could get to that uh, next round, the knockout round. Unfortunately, they don't. They finished two and two in play, um, and the Pacers are the ones they're going to win because they are undefeated um, in uh, the play. They're three and zero, and they have the Pistons to close it out. But you know, he has to be pleased with, I guess, certain aspects of this. But it's still a tough loss to swallow when you you have it there for the taking several times, Mark. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's good aspects. You know, you have some guys that play very well. Pat Bev gave you some good minutes late. Mm -hmm. Maxie, um, Joel played well. Tobias did what he does as being, um, you know, a norm. But, you know, the players in the locker room, I think coach understands, like, okay, you got your guys. We're about to talk money here, so be careful. So we have your top guys making max deal, right? But then you look at the other guys on a uh, veteran minimum. Chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh YouTube của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc tiếp phần 2 của câu chuyện Trung Ương Hoàng Đế Nguyễn Nhạc Biết chú em ít mình là thầy họ giáo của đạo Ma Ní Một tôn giáo thờ thần lửa, tàn dư của văn hóa tràm Và người thượng là Quảng Ngãi đến Phú Yên và cả Tây Nguyên đều theo Nguyễn Nhạc giao việc trần vị ở Hà Đạo cho Nguyễn Hệ và Trần Quang Diệu Đem Nguyễn Lữ đi cùng mình lên thượng đạo thuyết phục người thượng xây dựng vùng hậu cứ trên An Khê có thần có thầy hỏa giáo tư hỏa giáo tư lư đi cùng hai anh em đi đến đâu cũng đều được người thượng hết lòng giúp đỡ giúp đỡ nhờ vậy mà việc đắp thành An lũy ở xã Phú An giáp thị trấn An Khê ngày nay được hoàn thành nhanh chóng, chủ trại Tây Sơn lại được một vị tù trưởng Ba Na ở mộ diệu, mộ điệu Tú An, gả con gái, làm vợ thứ gọi là Cô Hầu. Cô Hầu đã giúp Nguyễn Nhạc khai khoản một vùng đất rộng lớn xung quanh núi mộ điểu để lấy lương thực, vận động người thượng đem voi, ngựa đến thành An giúp nghĩa quân. Nguyễn Nhạc đi đến đâu đều được thượng xem là vua trời. Suốt một dãy trường sơn, các vua thủy xá, hỏa xá, nữ chúa, trà mà thạch thành đều đồng lòng nối dậy, hưởng ứng. Thấy miền ngược và miền xuôi được ủng hộ, Nguyễn Nhạc về An Thái xin ý kiến thầy giáo hiến. Thầy bảo Trương Phúc Loan tham bể, bạo tàn hết sức, người người oán giận, thời cơ đã phải chấp lấy dựng cò khỏi nghĩa, truyền dịch, chống quyền thần Trương Phúc Loan và Hoàng Tôn Dương để mua chuộc kẻ sĩ trong thiên hạ. Thế là ba anh em Tây Sơn về căn cứ An Khê, hội quân, làm lễ tế cò rồi đưa quân ào ào tiến về miền xuôi, chiếm giữ vùng rừng núi và đồng bằng cả ba huyện, Tuy Viễn, Phù Ly và Bồng Sơn. Nghĩa quân đi đến đâu cũng tịch thu của cải của ác bá chia cho người nghèo rốt khó nợ của những nhà hào phú chuyên lấy việc cho vay nặng lãi để bốc lột dân quê làm giò trước sân đình kêu gọi trai tráng cầm vũ khí đứng lên ứng nghĩa đánh bọn quan tham lật đỏ quyền trần trương phúc loan nông dân các làng cầm giáo cầm gươm nô nước gieo hò đi theo quân khởi nghĩa đông như kiến vì vậy các huyện thành chưa đánh đã tan quân huyện và nha lại kẻ đầu hàng người hoảng loạn chạy trốn khắp nơi video của mình đến đây là kết thúc xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc tiếp phần 3 của câu chuyện trung ương hoàng đế nguyễn nhạc 
Mất Ba Huyện, Tuy Viễn, Hồ Ly và Bồng Sơn, Trấn Thổ Nguyễn, Khắc Tuyên đóng cửa thành phố. À, đóng cửa thành cố thủ ở thành Quy Nhơn, trò viện binh. Thành Cao, Hào Sâu, quân lính canh phòng nghiêm ngặt, biết không thể dùng. Đại binh, hạ thành nhanh chóng. Là người đa mưu, trúc tí, Nguyễn Nhạc dùng kế cho nghĩa, nghĩa binh, giỏi võ nghệ, giả làm. Hương binh bắt được nhạc, đã gánh đến lĩnh thưởng, bị mắc mưu. Tuyên có mỏ cộng thành, thì đám hương binh trở tay giết hết lính các. Phát báo lệnh cho đại binh trà trộn trong dân chúng, ở nấp trước, trước cửa thành, tràn vào đoạt phổ thành trong chốc nhát. Sau khi làm chỗ Quy Nhơn, Nguyễn Nhạc thân cầm quân ra đánh chiếm Quảng Ngãi, đánh tan quân bộ của Phỏ Mã Nhất, của chú Nguyễn và ở bờ, ở Bình Đê, bắt sống quân thủy đạt được voi, thuyền, lương thực và vũ khí ở sông Trà Khúc. Tiếp cận lại đánh tan quân chú Nguyễn ở Bích Kê, giết chết tiết chế tôn thất hương và bọn tùy, tùy tướng, làm chỗ tỉnh Quảng Ngãi. Cũng trong thời gian này, Nguyễn Nhạc sai các tướng, đem quân vào đánh chiếm Phú Yên, Diên Khánh, Bình Thuận, làm chỗ cả một giải từ Quảng Ngãi tới Bình Thuận. Cuối năm Giáp Ngọ năm 1774, quân trịnh đàn ngoài do Hoàng Ngũ Phúc chỉ huy đánh chiếm Phúc Xuân, rồi tiến vào Quảng Ngãi, làm người cơ chí Nguyễn Nhạc xin giảng hòa với Hoàng Ngũ Phúc nhận quan chức của chúa trệ để tập tập trung lực lượng đánh chúa Nguyễn ở gia định mùa xuân năm ất mồi năm 1775 Nguyễn nhạc sai Nguyễn Lữ và Phan Văn Lân vào đánh gia định chúa Nguyễn Phúc thuần hoảng sợ bỏ chạy sang năm Bính Thân năm 1776 Đỗ Thành nhân lúc Đỗ Thành nhân giúp chúa Nguyễn lấy lại gia định được tin có sự bất hòa các bầy tôi của chú Nguyễn ở gia định. Vào tháng 3 năm Đinh Dậu, Nguyễn Nhạc Sai Nguyễn Huệ, Nguyễn Lữ đem quân vào đánh chiếm lại gia định. Thái Thượng Vương Nguyễn Phúc Thuần, Tân Chính Vương Nguyễn Phúc Dương bị giết. Tháng Chạp năm Ất Mồi năm 1775, quân trịnh rút khỏi Quảng Ngãi về giữ Phú Xuân, Quảng Nam thuộc về nhà Tây Sơn. Và video của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo.